SaaS revenue should be easy to forecast. You take the number of customers, multiply them by the monthly subscription rate, and there's your model. But when you actually try to build a model, you realize it's a little bit more complex. And that's why I'm walking you step by step on how to build a SaaS revenue forecast model from scratch. We'll start with a simple model and we'll finish with a more complicated model that includes impactful variables that most people leave out. So make sure to stick around for that and let's get started right now. This model is going to be at the monthly level. So I'm gonna jump over here to cell C3 and I'm going to type Jan. And then I'm gonna click on this little green square in the lower right hand corner left click with my mouse and drag that all the way until I see December. And then when I release, Excel is gonna populate all 12 months across the top of my spreadsheet. And then I'm just gonna jump over here to the right of December and add a total column. And then jumping back over to cell B4, we're going to add our outputs that are essential for calculating our revenue forecast. And those are ads, drops, net, customers, and revenue. And if you're enjoying this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what else can I help you with in Excel. I read and reply to every single one. Thanks so much for doing so. It really helps out my channel. And then down below these outputs, starting in cell B11, we're going to add some key variables that will drive our revenue forecast. And the first of those are ads. And for this first go around, we're gonna assume a flat number of new customers each month. And so I'm gonna assume that this business adds 200 customers per month. And I'm gonna jump up here into the model, press the plus sign, which is the same as pressing the equal sign to start a new formula. I'm gonna click on the cell containing those 200 ads and then press F4 to apply an absolute reference, which will lock that cell reference in place when I drag it to other cells. And I'm gonna drag that variable all the way across the model and then jump over here into the total column and press Alt Enter to auto sum these cells quickly. And then I'm gonna jump over here and expand this column to fit the cell contents. And we're gonna skip drops for now and then calculate net customers. And in this case, we're starting from zero. So the net customer count for the month of January is equal to the ads for the month of January. So I'm just gonna press plus sign and select that 200. And now I'm gonna press the tab key to jump over to February. And for the remaining months, net customer count is calculated as the previous month's net customer count plus the current month's ads minus the current month's drops. And so I'm gonna press enter and then I'm gonna drag that formula all the way to December. And this formula here is a rolling count. So you know you did it right if your December net customers equals your total ads in column O. And those two should be equal because we haven't taken into consideration churn yet. And you can see here that they are, so that's a good thing. And the total is just gonna equal the December balance, in this case, cell N6, and I'll press enter. Now, moving on to our next variable, we're going to add churn. And this is typically expressed as a percentage and represents the number of customers that leave your business every single month. And for now, I'm gonna enter 2%. And something to think about when calculating dropped customers is this business has customers sign three month agreements. So churn for customers added in January can't begin until April. So to calculate churn, I'm gonna jump up to April because that's the first month that customers can leave. And I'm gonna take the net customers from the previous month and multiply them by that 2% churn rate and press F4 to lock that churn rate into place and then press enter. And because you're applying a percentage, you might start to get fractions of a customer. So to overcome that, I'm gonna press F2 to edit the cell and I'm just gonna round this whole thing to zero digits and now press enter. And I'll drag this all the way through December and press Alt Enter to sum those cells. And then to calculate revenue, the last input is MRR, which stands for monthly recurring revenue. 
In this case, the MRR is $250 a month. And to calculate monthly revenue, just take the net customers for the month and multiply it by the MRR and make sure to press F4 to lock that MRR cell in place. And I'm gonna drag that across through December. And at this point, AutoSum doesn't know which cells to sum. So I'm just gonna type equal sign sum the old fashioned way, close parentheses and press enter. So this is a solid, simple model where you can create different scenarios and measure different outputs. And here's how I like to do that. I'm gonna jump over here to cell E10 and I'm gonna type scenarios. And then I create a two by two matrix for low and high values and enter those values into the model to get an expected range of revenue performance. So 200 ads is gonna be our low number and 300 is gonna be our high. And 2% churn is going to be our low churn percentage and 5% is going to be our high. And so we've already got 200 and 2% plugged in. So I'm going to copy this output and just paste it here as values. Then I'm going to update the ads to 300 and paste that output here in this cell. Now I'm going to update the churn to 5% and paste that value here for 300 ads and 5% churn. And then I'm gonna update the ads to 200. Copy that value and paste it here. And then I'll highlight these and turn them into currency with no decimal points. And now here, you've got a simple range of revenue scenarios based on your possible range of inputs. And while this model is great, it still has a few flaws. So let's move on to the complicated model with a couple more variables. The previous model only included one price point, and that's not the case for most businesses. So one easy way I've found to include multiple price points is to calculate a weighted average MRR. And to do this, we're gonna to have to add a couple more variables down here. MRR low is the low price point offered by the business. And that is $250. MRR low percentage is the percentage of customers that purchase that low price point. In this case, 55%. MRR high is the high price point charged by the business. In this case, $350, MRR high percentage is the percentage of customers that purchase the high price point. And for that, you can just do one minus the MRR low percentage. And so lastly, I'm gonna go up here and change the MRR name to weighted average MRR to be clear on what it is. And to calculate that, I'm gonna start a new formula take the low price point multiplied by the low percentage, close parentheses, and add in the high price point multiplied by the high percentage. And since MRR is already connected into my model, when I press enter, it's automatically gonna flow into the model and update my revenue forecast. And since we're incorporating a higher price point, I expect that forecast to increase from the 3.3 million we're showing right now. And upon pressing enter, our new updated forecast is 3.9 million. And the next variable we're going to include is seasonality. So I'm gonna type that here. The previous example straight lined new customer ads every single month. And that's not gonna be the case for most businesses. Sales may increase at the beginning of the year when customers have fresh budgets or peak during summertime. So one way to do this is you can just key in data up here and just go one by one for each month. But I found another way, and it's easier for businesses that have a total customer count goal for the entire year. So for this, I'm actually gonna take the total ads for the year and assume that's our corporate goal. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste special values. And over here, I'm gonna create a seasonality table to allocate a percentage of that 2,400 customer count goal to each month. And I have that pre-populated and I'm just gonna jump down here and press Alt Enter to make sure those sum to 100%. So the percentages represent the percent of the total annual goal that the business will sell in a given month. Now, before we incorporate this seasonality table into our model, 
take note of the current revenue forecast of $3.9 million. And so to apply these percentages to our annual goal, I'm going to jump up here to cell C4 and enter a formula. So I'll press the plus sign and select the 2400 sales goal and press F4 to lock that into place. And then I'm going to press multiply and type out the transpose formula. Transpose will rotate the vertically aligned percentages in the variable section to fit the horizontal alignment of the model. So I'm just going to highlight these cells here, press F4 to lock them into place, close parentheses, and press enter. And you get a spill error. So to get rid of that, I'm just going to delete these other cells, and that fixes the spill error and allows the formula to populate the remaining months. And the seasonality consideration actually reduced our revenue forecast. The seasonality pushed out those customer ads and the revenue associated with them later into the year. So the last variable that we're going to include takes into consideration when customers start their service in the month. Right now, this model assumes every customer starts on the first day of the month, and that's not a realistic assumption. So we're gonna create a new variable over here called monthly start, and we're gonna key in 50% which means that on average, customers are starting around the 15th day of the month. And for this variable, and before we update the model, let's take note of the current revenue forecast, 3.88 million. For January, I'm gonna jump up here and click F2 to edit the cell. Press the multiply symbol and select the 50% monthly start and press enter. For the remaining 12 months, starting with February, I'll press F2 to edit the cell, and I'm going to press the subtraction symbol, open the parentheses, select the current month's ads, hit multiply, and multiply them by the weighted average monthly recurring revenue, and press F4 to lock those into place. And then I'm going to multiply that by the monthly start value, and click F4 to lock that into place as well. So what we're doing is we're subtracting out half of the revenue for the ads, and I'm gonna close parentheses and press enter. Then I'll drag that formula all the way through to December. And you can see that the updated forecast is nearly $300,000 less. And if you think this model looks super boring and plain, well, I totally agree with you. Which is why you should watch this next video where I show you how to format this exact model to look more professional and turn it into something that you would feel proud sharing with your boss.